it, it seems like you've had now a couple of opportunities to go against Tom Brady. And it seems like you two may have this little thing going on with each other. How would you describe that? Whatever, you know, that maybe competitive edge, if you will. I don't know what he have against me. I don't have nothing against him. Uh, I just go out there and play hard and uh, try to try to affect the quarterback within the game, but I don't have nothing against him. Um, I think he's a heck of a player. Let's go next to Aaron Ladd. Go ahead, Aaron. Chris, hope you're well. We talked to Travis after the game about what feels different this year versus last year. And he said, you know, this year's this team's mindset had a lot of approve it, trying to go out and prove things last year, maybe felt like you guys were, uh, you know, not belonging. How do you feel about that, I guess? I definitely agree with what Trav said. Uh, it's, a, it's, um, it's a lot of history to be made on both ends. You got Tom Brady who is trying to make seven, and you got the Chiefs who is trying to make a um, back-to-back. So and um, they haven't been done in a while. So we both fighting for something. And um, I feel like this year we took up on us as a team to, you know, not only – preach a running back, but truly believe that we had the team to do it to run it back and uh, repeat what we did last year. Let's go next to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Chris, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you, Herbie? Hey, I'm well, thanks. We know what you guys can do on the field. We know what Coach Andy Reid can do from the sidelines. But from your perspective, what about the guy behind the scenes, Brett Veach? Well, what stands out to you or impresses you the most about his ability to build this team and keep this team together. Yeah, listen, um, that's a lot of guys that don't get mentioned uh, that uh, play significant roles to keep this team together. Starting with the head scout, Ryan Nutt, you know, um, Brent Tillis, who is uh, uh, the contract guy, the numbers guy, Chris Shea, and um, and Veach, you know, and f- so far on to the other individuals that doesn't get the media attention that, you know, they deserve. Um, yeah, it's a lot of guys behind the scenes that Mark Donovan has put in place in order to keep this team's success rate high. And, you know, I'm very thankful for the Hunt and the Hunt family for keeping me around to enjoy this ride. And uh, we're very fortunate to be here. But Veach and his team is uh, remarkable uh, how they was able to manipulate the contract situation and keep us all together, you know. Especially when Pat texts me talking about he left money on the table. That's still baffled to me to this day. How in the hell you leave money on the table when you got a half a billion dollar contract? I still don't get it, but you know, some way they figured it out, you know. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Chris, good to see you. I'm uh, just interested what you learned playing the Buccaneers earlier this year and, and what you may have learned sort of watching tape of them since that, since that first matchup. Um, they're on a six game winning streak, if I'm correct. The last time they lost was against us. Um, um <clears throat> I think when they played us, um, they kind of readjusted some things and they had a week off and then had a lot of guys get uh, acclimated to the to the system, Tom Brady lights and their coach. And uh, they, they've been they've been playing well, um, especially the later part in the season. You know, they went down to New Orleans and sealed the job on them. And then they went to Green Bay, who was the number one offense. And, and play outstanding. So we, they're definitely a different team from, from when we played them a couple of weeks ago. We'll take three more starting at the top with Harold Kuntz. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Chris, hope you're doing well, man. Uh, Girl, likewise. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, uh, Tyree Kill said something real interesting after the game, and he talked about, you know, how Twitter was a motivating factor in that game. And I'm just curious when you guys are kind of looking at everything in social media and what have you, do you guys pull any motivation out of that, or is it just kind of you, the motivation is winning? Honestly, um, I get a lot of motivation from Twitter. Um, I read everything. I might, might not ever speak on it, but I read, I see everything that people say, and um, I take it personal. I take it very, very personal. No matter if it's good or bad, I just take it to heart, man. I, I wear my emotions on my sleeves when it comes to that type of stuff, and um, I'm not an opinionated person, but when people tend to have their opinion on me or the way I play, I, I tend to take it personal. So uh, I can see where he's coming from, where that is motivation for him. It kind of motivate me also. The last two, Seren and then Therese. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, Chris, uh, on a radio station down in Tampa yesterday, uh, Bruce Arians said he felt that their offense really came together starting with the second half. 
uh, against you guys in that game. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit and you really answered the bell against the Bills about the close games, people kind of knocking you guys for close games. So, you, you know, they, you guys were up 17, they cut it to three. Did, did you feel like they discovered something on you or did you guys maybe take off the gas pedal? And what's your reaction since you do take these things to heart to that comment from Bruce Arians? Um, listen, they, um, they made a few adjustments and, um, end up scoring a few touchdowns in the second half of that, but we was able to pull it off, but, uh, you know, no comment on that, you know, no comment. Well, go last to Therese Paler. Go, Therese. Hey, Chris, how you doing, man? T-Man, what's good? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. It's good to see you and ask you this question because I think you're the perfect man to ask it to. Um, I know you guys got a tight new locker room, and I know being in there, you know, watching you kind of touch a lot of different corners of that room. So my question to you is in retrospect, like how much success, how much of the team's success this year can be attributed, you think, to the way you guys were able to stick together throughout a t trying 2020? Like we know there was political stuff and people have different ideas, but it seems like you guys were able to really um, kind of put that stuff aside. And also it seemed like you created a welcoming environment for everybody and put together and just kind of put off all the trying stuff and come together for the common cause. So just in retrospect, how important was that to building the, the type of team camaraderie necessary to make a run like this? Yeah, that, that's huge, man. Heck of a question, Therese. Um, that's huge, especially keeps the chemistry of the team together. And um, one quote that the team goes by is team first, team second, and team last. No matter what position of how good you're doing, you got to understand you're, you're, you're benefiting the team, you know, and everybody have that same mindset. You know, even when Pat was MVP, we still was able to communicate. We still hung out. And, you know, um, that's just how it is within this team. You know, everybody can talk to everybody group. I go cuss the old lineman out, hang with them, crack a few jokes. You know, they're just the nature of this team in the locker room. It says a lot about, you know, the guys we talked about earlier, Ryan Nutt, finding high character guys, locker room guys that can come in and, uh, and converse with any type of group and uh, put their personal goals aside for the main goal. Chris, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Y'all guys take care.